Hello. Uh, today I'm going to be giving a demonstration about how to make a small cleated panel. This is a very flexible object that museums use for different kinds of display, but also an artist can use this as a painting panel. Okay, so let me show you the things you're going to need for this project. You're going to need a sheet of, I'm using half inch medium density fiberboard. The advantage of fiberboard is because it's a manufactured product, it has no grain or direction, which makes it much less inclined to warp than something like half-inch plywood would be. It's also cheaper, it's easier to cut. For this type of project, it has all advantages. The only real downside is it's very vulnerable to moisture, so you have to make sure you seal it well. Um, I've cut myself four beveled cleats, which I'm going to assemble around the piece like this. You're going to need some Elmer's wood glue. I'm using brads. If I was working in my shop actually at the museum, I would use uh, a nail gun to do this, but I'm going to do it by hand. Obviously a hammer. You need a cup of coffee to stay alert and a measuring device. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the pieces I pre-made. I cut this, I want ultimately to be at 18 by 18 inches, but I've cut this about a sixteenth of an inch short of that because I know I'm going to be wrapping it in canvas, and so my ultimate dimension is going to get to 18, and that's what I want. Um, I cut these cleats on a table saw set at 45 degrees. The reason I'm using 45 degrees is if you cut at 45 degrees, the, the amount of drop from the high point to the low point is going to be the same as the dimension of your material. So I know that my inside edge is a half inch down from my outside edge. And that's going to be useful when I go to hang it on the wall in terms of knowing exactly how high I want to be. Um, and then you can see how this is assembled with the angles beveled in. And when I mount it on the wall, I have the reverse piece, which I'll mount on the wall, and then this piece will mount up against that, and that's how it's going to hang. And um, I'm going to talk about a principle of slack, but I've, I've used slack in two ways here. First of all, I could have made this very precise so that it came together super precise, but I've actually left a little bit of space. Now I don't have to worry about did I get it exactly right when I cut it? Is it going to, is there going to be enough room to bring in there? And then when I'm using this cleat, same thing. When I find my location on the wall, if I didn't find exactly the right location, I can move the piece a little bit this way or this way. It gives me a lot of flexibility, and that flexibility in the end lets me ha do a much more precise job. Okay, so let me show you how I'm going to measure where to place my cleats. Uh, there's two methods. I'm going to show you the harder method first. And that would be to uh, use your ruler this way, measure some amount in, make some marks, try to be as precise as possible, do that, and then draw between the two marks, and then flush your cleat up to that. Now there's a simpler method which I prefer not only because it's more simple, but because it tends to be more fail-safe. I just got a, a piece of wood here. I'm going to just hold this piece of wood flush against the outside edge of my board. Now I'm using the ruler this direction instead, and because I already know the dimension of this ruler happens to be about as far in as I want to go. This works. If you want to go in different dimensions, just use a different dimension material. It doesn't even have to be a ruler. So I'm just going to hold those two parts, draw my line, move to the other side, and then go around and draw all my lines that way. All right, so let me show you how I'm attaching these. I'm going to be using some small brads. I have a package here. Um, again. The mechanical method is more reliable than measuring or reading numbers off a package, so 
I'm always going to check. I'll take my brad and I'll line up. I'm now I'm going into two pieces, and you can see I'm going about three quarters of the way into the second piece. So that's that's pretty good depth. I'm going to start these. You can go in. You have to gauge it by your eyeball, but the farther in you get without going through, the better off you're going to be. So I've gone probably three quarters of the way into this board just by, you know, just by judging it from how it looks. Don't be shy about using glue. This is the back of a piece. If the glue slops out, no big deal. If you don't use enough glue and nothing holds together, that is a big deal. So you take that and squeeze it down and looking, you're looking, you can't see it as well as I can from where I am, but I'm lining up very carefully to that line and starting this one side slowly and watching it. And I'm just sort of roughly gauging that I'm centered because it's not necessary to be completely precise in terms of it being oriented this way. And now I'm going to do my second one. And this you do want to be very precise about. If you've, you know, you're in the middle of that line, right on the edge of that line, as close as you can get to being exact. That's great. And then put a second brad in there. And that's it for attaching these. I'll attach together three. So I've attached my four pieces, and you can see how I've made these two sections a little bit shorter, knowing that they will have to sit slightly inside of this. And I've given myself a little bit of slack, so I didn't have to precisely measure everything out not important for this. Uh, now the one thing you're going to, uh, one place you're not going to want sloppy glue, you can see I've got a little bit there, that doesn't really matter. But on these inside edges in here, that's where I'm going to be hanging from. So I'm going to go in, I'm just using a paper towel and a little bit of a palette knife, and I'm just going to go in and just clean those parts. Just to make sure if there's any glue in there, if any glue got into that section, I want to make sure that those are really clean. Otherwise, that's not going to hang well. So there, I did that. There's a little bit of glue that came off on that. So here's our finished panel. Um, if I was going to use this panel for, say, uh, uh, putting a block of text on the wall, I would just paint this. Maybe match the wall color or do something slightly off the wall color, and then I could create a text panel, which then, instead of having to scrape text off the wall, I can just take this panel and... and be rid of it at the end of the show. If I was going to use this to say display a textile, I might take uh, this kind of ethafoam material, which is you know just like an eighth inch dimension, and I would cut that and shape it to the front size, and then wrap this panel in fabric of whatever color I wanted. And then I, because I have a little dimension in this. It sets my fabric just a little bit off the hard surface and then I can pin through the fabric and into this to attach the textile or sew through. I just It gives me a basically a little bit of space. Um, in this case, I'm going to turn this into a painting panel. So, so I have a little sanding block and I'm just going to go in and round off all these sharp corners. And that's sort of it's doing two things. It's changing the visual appearance slightly, just softening that edge a little bit. And then when I go to wrap fabric over it, that fabric is going to move much more smoothly over that edge. I want to also get the corners, just blunt those corners off, all of my edges, and I'll go all the way around both sides of this to do that. All right, so I've sanded all my edges so everything is smoothed out just slightly. Um, I'm going to make sure I just get rid of all the dust, both sides, and as you can imagine, you can really only seal this piece one side at a time. Um, and let me explain why I'm sealing both sides. Uh, if I was to seal one side, one side would be much more porous than the opposite side. As humidity changes, that side is going to expand a little bit, and that's going to warp my panel. So. Any kind of material that you seal, you should always seal all the sides of it. That's going to keep it much more stable. So, 
Let me get my polyurethane here. Got a brush. And, you know, be liberal, but it's not a it's not a decorative moment, it's a mechanical moment. Make sure you get all your edges. Keep going around the whole piece. And now I'm going to flip my panel over and seal the back side. Uh, the important place to think about getting this sealer is there's, there's all these small voids in here and make sure you get all the surfaces covered when you do this. Any, any space that's not sealed well is going to be vulnerable to moisture and that's going to make the integrity of this panel not as, not as good. So there's my finished panel sealed on all sides and ready for the next step. Join me in part two and I'll describe how to wrap that panel in canvas and prime it so that it's ready for painting.